Hello world, this is Random Fix, and today we're going to be changing the rotors and pads on this Ford Mustang Mach 1. And I went ahead and already changed out the front ones so they're nice and clean and brand new. So follow along, let me go ahead and show you how to do this. I'll have a link to the other video in the description box below. So let's go ahead and get this vehicle up in the air. You don't have access to power tools. You want to go ahead and break the legs loose on the ground before you lift it up in the air. And you just want to break them loose about a quarter turn each. And now I'm going to be using a floor jack with one of these hockey puck style adapters underneath the differential and I'm going to be lifting up the vehicle. With my Mustang sitting on jack stands, I'm going to go ahead and remove all the lug nuts from the wheels. My wheels removed. You want to make sure you're not making the rookie mistake. You want to go inside and release the parking brake on this vehicle. Parking brake is now down and car is out of gear so it is going to be in neutral and this is a pretty cool thing if you're not sure if your car has palsy what you can do is turn the wheel and if they both turn the same exact direction your car normally has a limited slip differential you're going to need a few things and First thing you're going to need is some brake cleaner, some brake uh, caliper lube, anti-seize with a brush, some tools, you'll need a 14 millimeter socket for the caliper bolts right here, you'll need a 15 millimeter socket for the actual bracket bolts, there's two of them in the back and I'll show you that. And it helps if you have a 15 millimeter open hand like this too, just in case. You're also going to need some kind of brake caliper compression tool just like this one. Because the back brakes aren't like the front. So the rotor actually turns in to go ahead and compress so you can put your new pads in. And you won't be able to use one of these universal ones over here. Because as you can see, that the tool here on the bottom is a lot wider. So this is only going to cause you damage unless you can find a bigger one. So you want to get yourself an actual compression tool kit like this. And what you want to do is you want to pay attention to this bolt right here. This is going to be the caliper bolt right here. I'm going to go ahead and remove the two bolts that hold the caliper in place. And there's going to be one up here and one right down here. And this is the 14 millimeter. So... You want to go ahead and loosen that up and only loosen up the top and once you got the top loosened you want to come down here and go ahead and loosen up the bottom here and the bottom you're going to kind of have to squeeze in there's a little spring back here all right bottom one is loose top one is loose i'm going to go ahead and remove them both completely And yours might be a little difficult to remove, but just play with it a little tiny bit and it does come off. All right, so that's off. And what you want to do is use some kind of hanger, bungee, whatever you have available, and try to see if you can get it through here and so you can support the actual caliper here. All right, so that's supporting my caliper. Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the 15 millimeter bolts that hold the caliper bracket in place. And there's one right here and one right down here. This one right here. 
and with both of those bolts loose my caliber bracket is just gonna come off right there and you can see that each one of the brake pads back here actually has the hardware attached here on the upper side and the lower side so you want to make sure you put this back in the same exact orientation here's your bolts right here that hold the caliper bracket in place as you can see somebody went ahead and used some sort of loctite on here if you're not very familiar with this or you haven't done too many brake jobs I recommend using the blue loctite on here it does a really good job and look up the torque specs okay, I'm gonna go ahead and compress the brake caliper here anytime you're gonna be compressing the brake caliper you want to make sure that the brake reservoir cap is off and somewhat loose you don't have to leave it off all the way you just want to make sure that as the brake caliper is compressing it doesn't have to fight any additional force back here I'm getting ready to do a complete brake flush but this is something you definitely want to pay attention to and if you don't finish that job that night make sure you go ahead and tighten the cap so you keep any additional moisture from entering your brake system I'm gonna go ahead and grab the right correct adapter for this car here and it should just sit right in between these two grooves and it should just lock in just like that and now I'm gonna go ahead and spin this back now using this tool and this magnetic it just grabs right in here so that attaches in here and I'm gonna go ahead and put it into place and with that in place I'm going to spin this back counterclockwise, this part right here, because you want to make sure you keep it nice and snug. And then I'm going to turn this clockwise. And this might be really hard at first to actually get the caliper to spin backwards. So what I do is I actually get the caliper to, to, to spin outwards for one second, just like that. And then I'll go ahead and push it back in. And this really helps lessen the load on this. And there it goes. And as you're spinning this and you get the piston to turn, you're going to have to readjust this. So you want to bring this out a little further out so there's less play in there. And then spin it again. And then readjust this and then keep spinning and with my caliper completely retracted it. I'm going to go ahead and remove the tool. So the tool is out of the way. Caliper sitting flush back there. Now I'm going to go ahead and clean some of this area here. that nice and shiny. You can see that this nipple back here for the bleeder is actually missing a cover. You want to make sure you put that on. It keeps crap from getting in the system. And you want to make sure you grab the hardware out of the top here. So push this out. Slide it towards the outside of the vehicle. And that lowers in there and now you just want to go ahead and kind of swivel that out and here's gonna be my new piece that I'm gonna install all right with that clean up now I'm gonna go ahead and install the new one and the secret to this is when you're doing it you want to kind of squeeze these a little tiny bit as you're inserting it and this will allow the the inner part to actually be able to go through that hole and put it right through that ridge right there and now it's locked into place this is a part that I actually pay a lot of attention to when I am doing a brake job on a Mustang this right here is going to be a component of your ABS so this is the ring that tells the computer how fast the wheel is spin, uh, spinning so it's kind of like a speed sensor so if you notice there's a lot of metal and debris on here so you got to be very gentle with this so what I do when I'm doing a brake job I grab some brake cleaner 
and I clean up this whole hub here. If there's a lot of grease and grime and whatever back here. Anything that can get in the way of the actual ABS system and the speed sensors, I'll clean this up. I'm already here anyway. So, take a couple of minutes to clean that up. And if you find any big chunks of metal or something sticking to the actual sensor here, you want to grab it off with your finger. Don't use any tools because you could break this, but now you can see that the metallic finish is returning back to that. So, oh, now I'll even spin it when I'm doing this. And then you want to go ahead and spray down this area right here. This looks really bad, but this is just actually anti-seize on here. So I'm going to go remove whatever I can. And once that's cleaned up, I'm going to apply some new anti-seize. So that way when I put my new rotor into place, it's not going to seize to the hub here. Now I'm going to go ahead and clean off whatever I can with the wire brush on some of the mating surfaces. And this is a great time to clean the actual caliper bracket here. And what I do with my pins, you got to make sure these guys glide here. So I always re-lube these. They pop out just like that. There's a little tiny seal here. And you just put your finger in there. Don't use any tools. And just comes out. And sometimes on different cars, they are size specific. So these ones right here, as you can see, they're identical. But on some vehicles, they'll have a little rubber garment or something. But... You don't have to worry about them on this. I'm going to go ahead and clean up this bracket now here. And I'll even spray in here and get all that gunk out. Make sure you get any of the contact points where the, the new pads are going to be sliding back and forth. Dump that out. grab the pins here clean these up by hand using some kind of shop towel and if you really want to be thorough go ahead and pop these in here and if you got any grease at the very tip go ahead and spin it around and you could try to retrieve any of it that's in there so but these are pretty clean in there if you are doing this you want to wear some eye protection Go ahead and let that dry out. While that's drying out, I'm going to grab myself some anti-seize here. And I'm going to apply it on the back of the hub here generously. Rub it in with my finger. You want to make sure you get around this collar right here too. This is a lot of times where the corrosion occurs and it keeps the rotor from sliding off. So I'm going to go ahead and get this all in here. Now I'm going to show you guys the easiest way to clean a rotor. So when you buy a brand new rotor, it comes with this protective grease that's kind of trapped in here by this bag so that way this doesn't corrode and rust. And you got to clean this. So the easiest way I've actually found to clean this is to go ahead and hang it on the wheel. So you want to make sure your hands are clean or change your gloves. And I'm going to go ahead and install my rotor on here backwards. And this really helps keep the cost down as far as having to spend six, seven dollars a can 
on the brake cleaner here and I'm going to go ahead and spray from the top down. You know, you get yourself some kind of paper towel here. Got my paper towel and I'm going to go ahead and wipe from the top down. Top down again. I'm going to repeat this one more time. Get myself a new paper towel and clean this up in here. So that's all clean. And now I'm going to go ahead and turn this around. Let's put on one of my lug nuts here to kind of keep the rotor in place so it's not walking everywhere as I'm doing my install with my pads and rotors. I'm going to go ahead and get the little crummier side to the bottom here so it's not dripping all over the place. I'm going to spray from the top down. And you don't have to get worried about this area right here because the brake pads aren't going to touch here. If you can, you actually want to try to leave that protective material on here. So while everything else is drying off, I'm going to go ahead and load up the calipers here with the pins and the pads. So I'm going to go ahead and load these up now. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and loop up the pins. And with the pins, I'm just going to grab a little tiny bit and kind of circle it. And a little bit really is better than just sludging this in there. And when you're putting this in, you kind of want to turn it like that. And this really helps grab all that grease and spreads it around in there lubricating it and you want to just slide it down you should have a nice and free moving pin now do the same thing with the other side just keep turning it as you're installing it now you want to make sure your gloves are clean All right, ensuring that my hands are clean, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and install my second brake pad. And this is something you got to pay special attention to. The hardware that comes in some of these kits are nice and shiny, but they don't actually fit. So I'm going to show you guys why. So this is the original hardware that came off the brake pads here. And here's the new one. The new one has this rear extension piece, which really does a good job of putting it in nice and snug. But the problem is that you can't actually go ahead and fit this in. So you're going to have to use or modify your new hardware to make this work. So I'm going to be using my old hardware that came with it. So this is something you do want to pay attention to. And I'm going to grab both of the old hardware pieces that came with it. And I'm going to load these up. Now I'm going to go ahead and install these. And believe me, this one is not going to be as easy as it seems, so it's going to take a little bit of time. And there you go. So you kind of got to wiggle it back and forth a little tiny bit. And this is the most important part. Before you go slap this on the car, you're going to have to grab yourself a little brake lube on here. And get this area nice and lubed back here back here in here and in here all right so with that in there you want to make sure your hands are clean you want to slide this back and forth a few times to make sure that that caliper grease got on with the actual bracket here Do the same thing with the other side. All right, so that's nice and lubed up. And you want to do the same thing on the lower one here too. And you want to spread these out enough so that that rotor is going to be able to fit in between there. So. Mine is pretty even. 
and you want to make sure none of them are crooked and they're both straight because if they're crooked and that caliper comes to compress it it may go ahead and cause some kind of problem so with my caliper bracket all loaded up with the pads and this is ready to go it's going to clear i'm going to go ahead and put this in place and there's going to be a couple of things that you do want to try to lube up as you're installing this you want to put a little lube back here which i'm going to do in this side as well as well as on the back side where the caliper is going to touch that will help eliminate any kind of squeals and get the caliper bracket rolls in place make sure you hand tighten them first if you haven't done this so many times on here please use some thread locker so you got the blue right here and this is going to be removable and then you got the high strength this is actually red in here if you look at it towards the top you want to apply a little tiny bit on the this bolt here and when you install it it will basically keep it in place and it lessens the chance of the actual brake caliper falling off at some point little tiny dab just like that kind of go around I'm gonna apply a little tiny bit all right now that we got our caliber bracket in place and the bolts have Loctite on there and we went ahead and even torqued them on we're gonna go ahead and make sure to give the caliper the best chance of sitting in there the first time and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and squeeze the pads on here that way they're nice and even and you can even put this just like that and the last thing we're gonna go ahead and do is apply a little tiny bit of caliper grease to anywhere the piston or the caliper is gonna go ahead and touch so I've already applied the back side earlier now I'm gonna go ahead and do this right here these are where the two arms are gonna to touch so you could also just Go ahead and just touch the little arms that extend and grab around the brake pads here. They make other products like this. I'll have a link to everything in the description box below as well. This works really well. This is sometimes my preferred method. If I have a vehicle that has a constant squeak, this will get used more often than the caliper grease, but I've never had any problems with this brake system causing any kind of brake noise. So, I'm going to go ahead and move that out of the way. And now you're going to reach around. Make sure that that brake cable is not binding on anything. And go ahead and put that uh, caliper on. What I always do, just so I have a little better success and no noise, I'll even put a little tiny bit of grease right here on the top of these springs here. And wherever they're going to touch, I'll put a little grease up there so that way it gets a real nice chance to glide around instead of metal to metal contact. So this is in place. You want to make sure that these pins are pushed in. So nothing is causing any kind of obstruction and you don't damage the boot on the back of the pins. Alright, so with everything in place, I'm going to go ahead and put the top bolt in over here and just go ahead and hand tighten this down you want to go like three or four turns at least because we're going to be putting a little bit of pressure on this and now we're going to have a little force from those springs fighting us back so what you really have to do is kind of hold this down at the same time you're going to be putting this in there and this is a little bit easier said than done so sometimes I'll even sit on the ground here and kind of give it all my might and get that lined up in there All right, so once you get it lined up in there, and you got two or three turns on there, ratchet this down. You're gonna have the back spring here in your way a little tiny bit, so just be a little patient with it. And make sure that the bolts are nice and snug. The other thing you have to pay attention to is that you see that this nut right here, or this little stopper here, it's 
kind of uh, lined up in that groove because if it's not in that groove, it's just going to keep turning on you and may never uh, correctly seat in there, which could cause damage down the line or could cause the caliper to come off. So you want to be extra careful with that. All right, everything's on there nice and correct. This is in there, and this topper's in the way. This topper's in the way, seat it correctly. And I'm gonna be doing complete brake flush on this vehicle here. But if you're not, you didn't get any air into the system, just make sure that the bleeder valve has a cap on here. It'll really save you a big headache down the line and they sell them in these nice 10 packs which can last you a long time. Anytime I'm replacing brake pads on a vehicle, what I like to do is come in here and pump the brake pad pedal at least six times before I continue on to the other side. And doing it this way really keeps the possibility of the brake fluid reservoir from overfilling and causing any kind of paint damage or leaking all over the ground. All right, guys, there you guys go. The rear rotors and pads have been changed out completely. I've got really good results. The car is driving straight. The brakes feel nice and firm. So I'm really happy with the way this turned out. The best part was that I saved a bunch of money doing it myself. And I got the parts for cheap. I'll have a link in the description box below on how to get parts for dirt cheap as well. So check that out. Give the video a thumbs up if it helped you guys out. Hit the subscribe button if it's the first time visiting the channel for more time and money saving videos just like this. And have a wonderful day. You know, if you guys have any comments, hit the subscribe button. And I really appreciate your continued support.